Hello, this is Dr. Ted Morrow with ED 101 and our Engage series. Today, I'm with my good friend, Dr. Paul Riccamini from Penn State to talk about response to intervention. And uh, Paul, uh, we've known each other for years. Um, you uh, specialize in improving the academic performance of students uh, in elementary and middle schools uh, and to address issues of struggling um, academics. Could you uh, tell our viewers a little bit about yourself and your work? Sure, Ted. Good to be with you. Um, I have been in higher education for 10 years, and prior to coming to higher education, I was a math teacher and or a special education teacher. So my background has really uh, prepared me to work with kids struggling in the area of math. Um, I actually have a undergraduate degree in mathematics, along with my certifications in special education and mathematics. So when I decided to go back to get my doctorate, I decided to focus on instructional techniques, assessments, and um, strategies that teachers can use to improve student achievement in the area of mathematics. And that's where my research has primarily focused. And as I've uh, transitioned into higher education, my outreach projects and research tends to focus on working with teachers to help them improve their instructional strategies and techniques in a way that will improve student achievement. And I've primarily focused in the area of mathematics. Well, there's been a real focus on math mathematics with the um, desire to improve uh, STEM, science, technology, engineering, and mathematics uh, programming in the schools. Um, could you tell us a little more about um, uh, how you use RTI uh, and specifically how mathematics ties into um, struggling students? Sure. Well, first off, as you know, the world is evolving very quickly. And one of the main areas that tends to be a need in the marketplace all over the world are individuals that are well-versed in mathematics. And that has really uh, put math at the top of a lot of uh, focus in terms of trying to improve student achievement. And here in the United States, we are struggling a little bit, actually a lot, in uh, teaching mathematics. So with math at the forefront, we have this other shift, which is this response to intervention, or as Ted referred to it, RTI. In some states here in the United States, RTI is called RTII, where they have two I's, and that stands for response to instruction and intervention. And although the term RTI is, is relatively uh, new and restricted in the United States, it is starting to um, attract attention at the international level. And really, although the term RTI may be new to some of uh, your listeners, RTI is really nothing more than pulling together assessment, curriculum, instruction, in a way that is focused on improving student achievement in whatever area the student is struggling with. And, and primarily, RTI has focused on reading and mathematics. And as you mentioned, it's a whole method of looking at how the students receive instruction, um, varying the curriculum, and um, really looking at the student's uh, interaction with the teacher. Um, could you tell us a little more about um, the processes of RTI or RTII? Sure. Um, RTI, at, at its most elementary, and I'm oversimplifying the purpose, RTI is about improving student achievement. And therefore, if you're trying to improve student achievement, there are really three main parts to RTI. You have your curriculum. In other words, what is being taught? And then you have how it's being taught, which is your instruction. And then the third phase of, of RTI is how, are, how do the students respond to the instruction? In other words, 
Are they increasing student achievement? So when you're talking about increasing student achievement, that enters into the assessment piece. And if your instruction and your curriculum are on target for the student's needs, then as you assess the student, you should see progress. And, and that's where the assessment piece is a little bit different than, than uh, my, my, many viewers may be, be thinking that it's not a sta necessarily a one-time standardized assessment, but there are generally frequent assessments, sometimes once a week, once every other week, that you're doing to determine if the assess or if the instruction is actually effective for the particular student. Now, besides the assessment, the curriculum, and the instruction, the fourth component, and this is one that is is sometimes challenging to teachers, and, and that is taking that assessment data and looking at it in a way that says, okay, what I was just doing with this student isn't working. So the student had responded. So what am I going to do differently the next attempt? And that, that really captures the purpose, the, the main overarching purpose of RTI. Now, in the United States, RTI is gaining a lot of momentum for the identification of students with specific learning disabilities. So that's more of a specific application of the, the broad framework of RTI. But it does have other benefits. Well, sure, the, the main benefit of RTI is it's, it's really, it really requires the teachers at the first sign of a struggling student to make instructional changes. So as I had said earlier, the, 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 the main point of RTI is to improve student achievement. Therefore, there is, it's becoming more of a preventive model than a remediation model. In other words, we're trying to catch the students struggling immediately and then to provide instruction that is based on the student's needs that will increase student achievement. And, and that's where reading and math has been the main focus. Elementary is not restricted to an elementary setting. That's where it has been primarily focused. And But we're seeing here in the United States moving it into middle school and even into the high school level, which, which each level has its own unique challenges. And... Um... I, I think it's important to note, and tell me if you agree, that the the impact of RTI upon um, educators is multifaceted. It doesn't just improve their ability to teach mathematics, but it, it impacts other subjects and really works with their instructional skills, doesn't it? Yes. RTI has broad impact. I mean, the research and most of the uh, initiatives that are out there are focused in, in reading and mathematics. But if you look, if you look at the essential piece of RTI is, and, and in broad terms, when a student struggles, data is collected to make a decision to better meet the student's needs. So that, that can be applied to any content area as well as behavior. Behavior, although, isn't necessarily uh, directly addressed in RTI, the, the same principles hold true with behavior, where you, you tend to have a focus on um, improving all students' behavior, and then when students struggle, you try to specifically target those students. Um, now, one of the things that I like to point out about RTI, although RTI is, the term is primarily used in the United States, the components that make up RTI can be found in, in, in almost ed any educational system that is operating, where you have assessments, you have your instruction, you have your curriculum, and then at the center of that is your students and how they're responding to it. So although RTI is, is maybe new, the pieces of it are, are likely not new, even at, at international, in the international systems of education. Paul, um, RTI has definite benefits. It's a preventative approach. Could you tell us a little more about the implementation and the expense uh, related to implementing a, a good RTI program? Sure. Well, well, RTI actually is um, it's made up of essential features, which more than likely are already in place in the school. So as far as the expense is concerned, RTI, the pieces of RTI are already what schools 
and educators and teachers are doing. Uh, what RTI is, is trying to do is have each of those pieces interact in a fluid uh, and dynamic fashion so that they're benefiting to each other. Instead of having the left arm doing something different than the right arm, it's trying to bring together uh, assessment with a purpose of using that information from the assessment to evaluate the instructional program for students and then determining which students are struggling and provide, trying to put something in place for them. Now, I've been in a lot of schools and you know, there's never a school that I've ever been in that says, well, we don't have anything in place for kids that are struggling. So it's, it's not that it isn't there. It's not that it's going to be an added expense that has to be brought in. It's, it's just that trying to put the pieces together so that it is a, uh, uh, a system that will benefit both teachers and students that are operating in a particular school. Now, on the other side of this, you, RTI could become expensive if schools go out and try to purchase interventions. And that's another round that you can look at is, is going out and buying the various interventions that are available for reading and mathematics. But I always recommend schools before they try to um, focus on their intervention piece, it will be most economical to focus on the instruction that all students get. Because if you can strengthen that, then what the result of a very good instructional program in an RTI model is it will reduce the number of students that are struggling. And when you reduce the number of students that are struggling, then you need less resources. If you don't address the instruction that everyone is getting, what often can happen is you can overload the intervention side in terms of the resources that are available. So, so RTI, like I said, it, the pieces are generally there. It's just making sure that the left hand is talking to the right hand in a way that is benefiting and, and focused on student outcomes.